This is Snowy the Snowflake. He is sad. This might be because he doesn't look like a snowflake. Like, at all. He's just a boring equilateral triangle. Look at that sad triangle face. Snowy was upset that other snowflakes in the cloud had such cool shapes. So Snowy went to get some advice from Professor von Snowinghausen, his mentor at Ida Snow State. Professor von Snowinghausen was one of the most beautiful snowflakes in all the cloud. Snowy asked her, Professor, how do I make myself more beautiful? The professor replied, I have no idea, Snowy. I'm too busy with my teaching, igloo research, and family to worry about something as trivial as how beautiful others think I am. Family? I didn't know you had a family. Oh, yes, Snowy. I have many snow children, snow grandchildren, snow great grandchildren, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, so on. Snowy looked confused, so the professor continued. Snowy, let me explain how snow babies work. When a snowflake is born, it's an equilateral triangle, just like you. Yes, I was once a little baby triangle. And here's a school picture of me when I was a teenager, like you are now. Look how young I am. Oh my, I forgot how bad my acne was. Now, when a snowflake wants to start a family, it finds a patch of snow dust and sings the snow serenade. Out of the millions of specks of snow dust, three will hear the serenade and grow into snow babies. Flake families love each other very much. In fact, we love each other so much that we join together into a family flake. When I had my three snow babies, they each attached themselves to one of my sides. Here's a family photo from that time. As you can see, it was hard to get everyone to smile at the same time. Now, here's a little math problem for you, Snowy. After I had my three snow babies, how many sides did our family flake have? Hmm. Hey, Dave here. We'll get back to Snowy and Professor Von Snowinghausen in just a snowman, but I wanted to pause here and talk about some... So, we started with an equilateral triangle. Let's call that stage zero. Yeah, I know it's weird to call it stage zero and not stage one, so if you're upset by this, please find your local mathematician and file an official complaint. Uh, they will be happy to talk to you, I, I promise. Then we added three more equilateral triangles. So now we have a shape which is made of four equilateral triangles melded together, like when Professor von Snowinghausen had her snow babies. It's actually a six-pointed star, and it has 12 sides because there are two sides attached to each of the six points. Let's call this stage one. So here are some questions for you to think about. If you do the same process again, what do you think the shape will look like when you get to stage two? How many triangles will you add? How many sides will the new shape have? Okay, that's probably enough to think about for now, so let's send it back to you, Professor Von Snowinghausen. Thanks, strange giant. Anyway, Snowy, eventually my snow children decided to have snow babies of their own. So we went back to the patch of snow dust and we all sang the snow serenade together. Now, as you know, Snowy, snowflakes can sing with as many voices as they have sides. You can sing with three voices. But after I had my snow babies, we could sing with 12 voices. That made our serenade more beautiful and this time 12 specks of snow dust heard the serenade and turned into snow babies and attached themselves to our family flake. Now here's a family flake photo from that time. Now, Snowy, how many sides did we have at that point? So now that we're at the third generation of Professor von Snowinghausen's family, it's turning into a pretty interesting shape, isn't it? It seems to be getting much more complicated at each stage. I'm not even sure what to call this thing. It's like a six-pointed star with tumors. Ugh. But even though the shape is complicated, did you notice how the rules for drawing it are actually simple? Do you think you can write down a set of simple rules that can always tell you how to draw the next stage? If you want to think about that for a second, pause the video and see if you can do it. Here's what I would say, and watch how the exact same rules can take us from stage zero to stage one, and from stage one to stage two. Step one, start with the shape from the previous stage, or an equilateral triangle if you're at the first stage. Step two, split each side into equal thirds. Step three, attach an equilateral triangle to the middle segment of each side. Step four, erase the lines to create one solid shape. And step five, repeat the first four steps. It's true, you can actually keep repeating these steps forever and the design will just get more and more detailed. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, my lawyer has told me to tell you not to try anything literally forever, for legal reasons. 
So there's a name for this. When you repeat a set of rules over and over again in the way we're doing here, you get something called a fractal. Here are some other examples of fractals. And when you look at these, think about the following two questions. First of all, what shape do you think they started with to make this design? And second, what simple set of rules do you think they repeated over and over again in order to get to this level of detail in this design that you see here? Okay, let's hop in our teleportation igloo back to Snowland. So snowy, my snow grandbabies attached themselves to my snow children and we were all one big happy family flake. Then I had snow great-grandbabies and snow great-great-grandbabies and we're all just gonna keep growing our family together, forever. And here's the thing, Snowy. The bigger I grew my family, the more beautiful everyone said I was. But I don't really think I'm any more beautiful than when I was a triangle. I'm just happy to have my family and my work and students like you. And that's what's beautiful to me. But if you don't want to have a family, then that's beautiful too, Snowy. Don't forget, triangles are some of the most amazing shapes in all of the cloud, and you should be proud to be one. Really? asked Snowy. Oh yes, Snowy. In class next week, I'm going to teach you how triangles are used to make something weird called video games. So, apparently in the world of snowflakes, they can sing with the same number of voices as they have sides. Anyway, I suppose we should probably figure out some kind of pattern for the number of sides. Remember, at stage zero we had three sides, and at stage one we had 12 sides. Do you think you see a pattern? And if you do, do you think it will continue to stage two? No matter what stage we're at, to draw the next stage we always just stick a triangle onto the middle of a side. All it does is it takes one side and it turns it into four little ones. So we're always going to have just four times as many sides when we get to the next stage. So at stage two, we have 48 sides, and then 192, and then 768, and then 3072, and then 4028. Before we go, let's look at one more question, and this one is a bit more challenging. So what can we say about the perimeter of this shape at each stage? Let's say our original equilateral triangle had side lengths of one centimeter, so the total perimeter is three centimeters. Then we're splitting each side into equal thirds, and so these are all one third of a centimeter long, but there are 12 of those little sides, so we do 12 times one third, which equals four centimeters. So the total perimeter is longer. Moving on to stage two, now the side lengths are one third of one third centimeters, so they're one ninth of a centimeter, uh, but there are 48 of them, so 48 times one ninth is five and three ninths centimeters in total. So once again, the perimeter got bigger. What's the perimeter in stage three? Leave that one for you to try to figure out on your own if you're interested. By the way, this is actually a really famous shape in math. It's called the Koch snowflake. And you can see that once we start to get to stage two, stage three, and so on, it really does look like a snowflake. And I personally think it's really incredible that you can start with something as simple as an equilateral triangle and just do these simple manipulations, repeat them over and over again a few times, and you get this really beautiful detailed complicated shape that really legitimately looks like a snowflake. And there are many other interesting questions we could ask or properties we could investigate about the Koch snowflake, but we're gonna leave it there for today. Let's finish with a song. This is the biggest chart-topping hit in the history of Snowland. This is the Snow Serenade by Professor Von Snowinghausen and her family flake band featuring Snowy, which by the way went triple crystal.